Hello Brewers. Today we're going to be brewing a British Golden Ale. So, so far we've brewed that stout. Results uh, of the two, com two yeast, the SO4 and the uh, London Ale 3. And because I preferred the SO4 flavours, I am going to use the SO4 in this golden ale. So, just getting my brewing salts. One teaspoon of gypsum. Daddy. One teaspoon of calcium chloride. Honey, don't touch that. Why are you doing that? And uh, because I'm, it's been raining here a bit. I'm just going to put a, a smidge of sodium metabisulfite in, just in case the council has up the chlorine in the town water. And I'll add this into my, add this into my strike water, and uh, we'll mash when it gets into temperature. Okay, so we've, we're mashing in now. Um, We've got 3.2 kilos of Gladfield Ale, 0.9 of a kilo of Vienna, and 0.3 of a kilo of Medium Crystal. And we're going for the Golden Ale, um, Hello, Daddy. and the pH Hello. is good, so now we can leave this for 60 minutes. As you know, I'll leave the um, top plate off for the first half of the mash, so I can stir it, get better, better efficiency and then I'll put the top plate on and clarify the word out. Okay. About 30 minutes now. Give the grain bed one last good stir. It's really started to rain here. And now I'll just go wet the edge of this, so it's easier to slide in. Just to the surface. Now it's really up to you if you want to take your stopper out and put your overflow thing in. I find if your flow rate's right, you don't need to worry about it. In fact, you can just take it off and leave it like that and it will be fine. So, if you flow, so this should, I'll, I'll get to see how the flow rate is in a few minutes but that'll all clear up and you'll see a delicious golden colour wort before we do a sparge. Okay we're at the end of the 60 minutes for the mash. That wort is so clear. And I'm going to try something different this time. Uh, normally I use a hop spider and I'll use it for the uh, the other edition but the um, first word edition I'm just going to throw in at the start Sparge. So sparging with um, uh, 16 litres of water to get a should get a total volume of around 28, and then hopefully a 23 litre batch. All right, see you soon. Okay, we've got our wort coming to a boil. Um, I'm not really sure what happened. I've got to get a second gravity reading um, for post uh, for pre-boil gravity. But it appears I've really overshot my uh, my target pre-boil gravity. Um, I was I'm aiming for a, I think it's about 10.44 for my post-boil gravity. My pre-boil gravity was already above that at 10.46. So just getting another measurement. Um, see how it goes. See if I'm going to add water or what I'm going to do. 10 minutes from the end of the boil, 20 grams of Amarillo hops, half a well flock tablet, a 
and one teaspoon of yeast nutrient. So my original gravity was, uh, sorry, my pre-boil gravity was 10.45, um, which is five, five points above what I was aiming for. I'm really not sure what happened. Um, it means uh, I've had a mash efficiency of above 90%, um, where the last, say, six batches, that hasn't happened. It's been consistently around 85. I did the same thing I always do. That's brewing. All right, um, so I've got 10 minutes left in the boil, and then I'll throw in the last lot of hops for Whirlpool hops. All right, we've just come up to the one hour mark for the boil. Going to turn the boiler off and take out the hop basket. And I'm going to throw in my Whirlpool hops into the main part um, and then do a, a 15 minute Whirlpool. Reason for that is just to see if I get a bit better aroma um, than just leaving it in the grain, the, the hop spider for those 15 minutes. But I, uh, before I Whirlpool I'll just make sure all the wort is out of the, grain, uh, the hop spider. You can see the uh, how much, so that's only got um, 20 grams of hops in it and that's how much moisture, how much wort they absorb that weighs a lot more, I'd say closer to maybe 100 grams yeah, they absorb a lot of moisture so with the grain father I find I've got to Oh, I have to um, whirlpool anti-clockwise, which is against my natural motion. Yeah, and that's because um, I have whirlpooled fast enough for the for the filter screen, the, the pump screen down the bottom to actually come off and not realise. Um, the reason why it works better this way is because the temperature probe actually stops the thing from coming off. So it was 100% Amarillo hops today for my British Golden Ale, which I know are American hops, but the uh, the style and the yeast are going to be they're they're British, which is the theme for the year. So, 15 minutes, and then um, we'll start the. Uh, the wort chiller, but I'm going to do it back in the mash again. Uh, back in the grain father to drop everything out inside the vessel before I transfer. It, I, I find it works a lot better. Okay, it's been 15 minutes, and as you can see, I've got the hose running through the wort chiller, um, and I've got got it filling up a bucket for um, for my cleaning water. I've got the work recirculating and also trying to get a bit of aeration in it as well. Um, and we're at 84, I'm going to try and bring it down as low as we can, although where I live. If it gets down to 30, I'll be happy. Cheers. Alright, proof that not everything always goes to plan on a brew day. You'll notice that I've taken the uh, controller off. It, it blew up as it was pumping into the fermenter so I'm going to have to try and fix that or get a replacement problem is they don't make the old one anymore and I'm not sure if I want to go to the Bluetooth version so anyway I'll um, I'll just have to manually transfer it so I've got this screen out um, and then I'll measure the temperature and I'm going to ferment it with SO4 at 20 degrees for about two weeks all right, well, that's the end of the brew day. Apart from the pump, went really well. Uh, overshot my gravity somehow, don't know why that happened. Um, but uh, I'll deal with it. So anyway, um, happy brewing until next time.